你好，你们好，大家好，我试试。I'm here with、uh, my friend Mary Jess. Your secondary school offered Mandarin to GCSE level,、mm. and then you carried on by yourself. Well, I really wanted to do the A level, but it wasn't available at all.、Yeah. But I knew that it was a great thing to do. My grandmother always told me that you must always have more than one string to your bow. A, she was a hairdresser and a florist. So if she couldn't work in floristry, she knew she could always work in hairdressing. So she always had some way of finding a job and making money. And I always wanted to be a singer. So as soon as she found this out, she said, "Well, that's not the easiest industry to get on in." <laughs> <laughs> the idea was this, that、um, Chinese was going to be the second string. I just loved it. So fascinating. Because up until the point when Chinese was offered, the only thing I knew about China or Chinese was. The local Chinese takeaway,、mm -hmm. which is not a very good representation <laughs> of everything that China has to offer. So I just found it so fascinating because it was so different, and I really wanted to keep going with it.、And、then when I went to university, Sheffield was the only place in the country that offered music and Chinese studies.、Yeah. So it meant that I could study Western classical music、mm -hmm. and my singing、mm -hmm. with Mandarin, and that got you、um, a year abroad in China in Nanjing.、Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So Nanjing Dashi. Nanjing Dashi. Let's talk about your experience in China then. Because Chinese is a tonal language, you tend to go out in your second year of study、mm -hmm. rather than your third, which is what happens for most modern language degrees. And so you'd go out there and start university classes, and they'd only speak Chinese to you. And so for the first, at least for the first month, we had absolutely no idea what was going on. Even at the time, we felt incredibly frustrated. By that, we then realise later on that it is just the best way of doing it, like a baptism of fire kind、mm -hmm. of thing, throwing you in at the deep end, going, "Okay, swim." Starting university was pretty amazing because there were tons of people from so many different countries that you got to speak to. So I ended up becoming really good friends with a, a German boy and a Belgian girl,、mm -hmm. um, quite a few people from Bulgaria.、It's、really multicultural. Yeah. And whenever you saw a Western person in the street, you wouldn't try and talk English to them because you didn't know where they were from. They might not speak English, so you spoke Chinese, and you get to hear everybody's different accents as well, which、yeah. I, I kind of like. <laughs> Canadian friend of mine used to go and get oranges from a market seller every day. He'd go there every morning because oranges was his favourite fruit.、Mm -hmm. At one point, the market seller invited him into his house, and there wasn't much there. There was a bed, sort of a simple bed, on the floor. The window didn't have any glass in it. It was a really simple existence. And the Chinese guy said to the Canadian friend, he said, "Look at this." This is my house, and I built this up from nothing because I worked hard, and I'm so proud of it. This guy didn't have anything, and he was saying how proud he was of what he's managed to achieve for himself.、Mm. And I think that's absolutely amazing. That humbles me every time I think about it. I guess the other main story to tell was my experience of. Chinese television. I mean, it was only my first semester in China. I'd been studying Chinese for a year before then because even though I'd done the GCSE, you go to university and you start from scratch again. Yeah. So I was ahead of most people in the first few months, and then、mm -hmm. we were all in the same boat again. So I first went to the TV studio, found a singing competition. So I just couldn't believe it when I saw it. My mum had always told me to always make the most of every opportunity available to you. I ran around the TV studios trying to find the producer, in my rather broken Chinese, <laughs> saying, "I need, I, I love singing, and I'd love to be able to sing if that's all right, please, you know, that kind of thing."、Um, so I found the producer and said, similar to him,、uh, and he said, "Sing." I decided to sing "Time to Say Goodbye" by Sarah Brightman,、mm -hmm. um, and he said, "Okay, let's get you on the show." And sang that song in the final.、Um, And that so it was that song that got me onto the show, and it was that song that helped me win the show. Really, the whole reason for being out there, and the thing that really did change my life, was the fact that I'd studied Mandarin Chinese, because I wouldn't have been out there otherwise, and then I wouldn't have been to the TV studios, I wouldn't have had that opportunity, I wouldn't have spoken to this producer and got on the show. So, 
I know I describe Time to Say Goodbye as the song that changed my life, but really it was learning Chinese that changed my life. Because without that TV show in China, I wouldn't have come back and been in all the national papers and had mm. Decca on the phone, the Universal Record label, calling me saying, hey, do you want to make an album? And that's all because I started learning Chinese as an extracurricular GCSE at my high school. If I hadn't have done that, I'd probably still be singing, but it wouldn't be in the same way. I wouldn't be traveling as much. I wouldn't be speaking to so many great Chinese people and making so many great Chinese friends. <laughs> and that, I just, I feel so blessed for that because they're just the most wonderful people. You know when you go to France and you try and speak French and they just go, no. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not speaking to you in French. And they just like reply in English all the time. They're really grumpy even when you're making an effort. But you go to China and you make an effort and you muck up a sentence or whatever. And they're just so happy to have somebody trying to learn their language. And I think that's absolutely amazing. It just makes you feel so welcome. And even though it's really scary when you're trying to speak another language because you're always worried that you're going to make a mistake. They make you feel at home about that because they say oh, if you ever need any help I'll, I'll help you out you know mm. and it just it takes that element of fear away and that's just the most wonderful gift when you're learning a language because you can't be afraid to make a mistake you have to just talk mm. and if you make a mistake then great because that's how you learn but the Chinese won't berate you for it they'll just say oh you need to say it like this because they want to help you and I think that's lovely I always think that about people who come over to this country because it's so multicultural now um, and you see it all the time in London where you get proper Londoners sort of feeling a bit annoyed about the fact that these foreign people aren't talking English properly and I kind of think well the, English is one of the most difficult languages in the world and these people are speaking it really well it's not their mother tongue give them a break it's a really difficult thing to do so I, I admire these people because quite a lot of the time, I mean, if we take Chinese people for an example, they speak their local dialect, their Queen's English, which is their Mandarin, mm. and then they probably speak Cantonese as well, mm. and they're learning English. This person speaks like four languages, and you've got a grumpy Londoner who speaks English, not giving them a break. You kind of think, well, they're doing better than you, mate. <laughs> anyway, I've rambled on for a long, long time. <laughs>